What is up everyone, Nick here, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you an update on my Iron Man Mark 46 suit. So let's get right into it. <coughs> so, uh, it's not gonna be done for New York Comic Con. You see, when I started making this suit in like May, I was expecting to have all summer to work on this and have it done for October for New York Comic Con, but, uh, Things changed. I had quite a bit going on, didn't have nearly as much time to work on the suit, but honestly, it's probably for the best. That means I won't have to rush through making this suit, so I'll probably have it done for next year for something like WonderCon. And that just means that I'll have extra time to work on some gimmicks, on some motorization stuff in the suit. That way this suit is gonna be like gangbusters. So I've already talked about the modifications done to the 3D models in the previous video. I'll leave a link somewhere right here to that video, but let me just reiterate real quick. So basically the base 3D model of the suit is the Mark 46 armor by Johan. 3D Printmaster, and once I had the files, I adjusted the scale to my body so that it would fit me, and then I started modifying the legs. So all the modifications done in the legs, I did myself using Mesh Mixer, 3D Builder, and Blender. But for the lower torso and upper torso, like the back flaps and the chest motorization, I commissioned my friend Levy 3D to modify Johan's original files so that they could be motorized. And of course, I started messing around with Levy's helmet. I'm not 100% sure if this is gonna work out. I might just use the regular faceplate, but we'll see. And on that note, let me show you guys what I've printed so far. Of course, we have the chest. I've printed out all the covers for the motorization bits. We have parts of a helmet right here, and then we have the rest of the suit. So starting at the bottom, we have the shoe covers. Then we have the final versions of the legs. They've finally been assembled and they work. Then we have the lower body right there, and we have the back. And then off to the side here, I have the shoulders, I have the hand guards, and I have the palms. So basically the only thing I have left to 3D print and assemble are the arms and some smaller parts like the neck and shoe covers and stuff like that. Now what I haven't shown you guys is the absolutely insane pile of 3D printed parts I have in the other room, which are all the prototypes and failed prints. Trust me, there is a lot. <laughs> But that's what you get when you try to prototype and design mechanisms and motorization stuff. You're gonna make a lot of prototypes and you're gonna make a lot of mistakes, but in the end, they're all worth it because what you gain from those failures is experience. So now I'm going to cover every single assembly like the helmet and the chest in further detail. And at the end of the video, I'll try on the legs, the lower body and the upper body, and we'll see how it fits. So for starters, we got head. So this is the Mark 46 helmet by Levy 3D. This is the third iteration of his 3D model. But you might have noticed uh, the faceplate. There's there's kind of a big hole here. Well, basically, I'm doing some uh, I'm doing some goofy stuff with this helmet. <laughs> basically, I want the faceplate to come apart in multiple pieces when it opens up, instead of just being you know one solid faceplate going up and down. I want individual components to be motorized. So I imported the faceplate into Blender, and I basically just used Kiara's Workshop's tutorial on how to edit 3D models. And once I cut off these eyebrow bits. I re-imported these 3D models into 3D Builder, and then I just repurposed Levy 3D's ear motorization for the Mark 3 through 6. So let me give you a closer look. And maybe you can see, but there's a hinge here, which attaches to an arm, which attaches to the servo. And then up here, there's another hinge, which attaches to the faceplate, and it attaches to the eyebrow plate that I sliced off. And what you end up with is this eyebrow piece that is motorized and it opens and it closes just like that. So I know it's not the most elegant solution, but it works. <laughs> the only thing that's going to need considerable modifications for this to work is the inner eyepiece. So basically it's all one piece. I'm gonna have to slice it into two individual parts and then I'm gonna have to cut away the top of the inner ear piece, that way it doesn't hit the servo arm. So if this faceplate mechanism ends up working, I'm definitely going to be making a separate video just on this in the near future. Let me just close this and move this aside. Now let's talk about the legs. Yeah. Alrighty. So the shoe covers have pretty much stayed the same since the last video, but the legs have changed quite a bit actually. So the hinge that attaches the shin to the thigh, instead of using a double hinge like in the last video, I ended up modifying it and using a single hinging point. So now there's only one point where this knee bends. Because back when it was a double hinge, it would twist, it would torque in weird ways, and I just didn't really like it. So I ended up swapping that for a single hinging point. And besides that, all the mounting points inside the legs are now fused to the 3D print itself. Once I was able to confirm that the mounting points were good, I just fused the mounting point 
into the 3D model and printed it as one single piece. So now it's like bulletproof. And I'm still using a long piece of TPU attached to the quad, to the knee, and to the shin. But instead of using elastics to attach everything, I'm now using springs. And that just means that this thing is going to be a lot easier when it comes to disassembling everything for painting. I won't have to deal with glue. I can just unscrew the springs from where they're mounted and then reinstall everything once it's all been painted. So yeah, that is pretty much all there is to say about the legs. And the mobility in this thing is fantastic. I'll show you guys that at the very end of the video. Yeah, hoopa. And next up we have the lower body. So we have the abs and we have the lower back. And there's quite a bit going on with this. So let me break it down for you guys. So first off, these hip pieces are completely separated from the rest of the body. So they're attached with TPU strips again and some elastics. So when I lift my legs up, these basically just shift and move around and they snap right back into place because of the elastics. And of course the cod piece is also on a piece of TPU and so is this little butt plate right here. And so far those two hip pieces, the cod and the butt plate, that's four pieces. We still have another four pieces to cover with this. Okay, so let me give you an up close view of this. So you have the ab piece at the front, that's one solid piece right here and it's all attached together with safety pins. So I can pull out a safety pin and it all comes apart. And then the back of these rib pieces attached to the main spine piece, again, with TPU strips. So this whole piece is flexible. So let me show you guys. Basically, I pull on this pin, this comes apart and because it's all attached with TPU, it can flex. So that means I can easily, that means I can easily wrap it around my body. Then the safety pin just slides back into the mount just like that. So yeah, quite a bit of flexibility going on with the lower body. And this is actually quite useful because this means I can completely take this apart into individual pieces and it makes it way easier when I'm packing and traveling. And here we have another big old piece. This is the back of the suit. So I commissioned Levy 3D to modify Johan 3D Printmaster's original Mark 46 files. So just this back piece has quite a bit going on. So if you look inside, you'll notice on each little corner here, there are now servo mounts and that allows me to motorize the back ailerons. I don't know how well you guys can see that since it's black on black, but yeah, it's a little flap. <laughs> I managed to print the entirety of this back on the Elegoo Neptune 3 Max. Um, it took nearly a week to print, and as you can probably tell, there are quite a bit of vibration artifacts left on the print itself, so this is gonna take quite some time to sand and to get smooth. So I'm not looking forward to it. So not only did I ask Levy to add the servo mounts for the ailerons, but I also asked him to slice off these trap pieces. And there are two main reasons why. Number one, it's quite difficult to pack in a suitcase or a piece of luggage or a case or whatever when these things are just sticking right out like that. And I also wanted to save some print time and filament. So having these pieces be their own separate parts makes it quite a bit easier to do. And if we take a look inside, you'll probably notice there are some big old screws right here. These are M5 screws and they screw into threaded inserts that are melted into the 3D print. So these things, they're solid. This is, this is not breaking anytime soon. And on top of that, I of course 3D modeled my own mounts for the magnets using Tinkercad. On my previous suit, I used these bar magnets quite a bit to attach stuff, but the only issue is if you glue them down, over time the glue fails and they'll just break away. So instead of using regular bar magnets, I bought the ones that had screw holes in them and then I designed these mounts so that I could physically screw the magnet into the 3D print and not have to worry about glue failing. And once everything was properly aligned, I could just melt the 3D prints into the main components themselves. So let me just take the chest here, overlap these magnets with these ones. Oh my Lord, they are strong. <laughs> and then these bottom ones, they don't overlap. They just come face to face like that. So it makes it a little bit easier to put it on and take it off. Voila. So yeah, there we have the full upper body. And that brings us to the last point of this video and that would be the chest. So you've probably noticed I've already gone ahead and installed all the panels for the motorized chest piece. So if I just lift this like that, move these to the sides and voila, motorized chest piece. So not only does that give us access to the inner details of the chest, but it also gives us access to the removable unibeam. So I'm not gonna lie, I am pretty excited about this. 
However, the only issue is with this, we need eight servos to operate all the four panels. Now it's already a pain to do all the soldering for the wires, for the servos, the button and whatnot when you're building a helmet. So to make a system that uses six extra servos, that would just be a total pain. And that's where PCBWay comes in. PCBWay is the industry leader when it comes to PCB manufacturing and 3D printing services. From custom circuit boards to innovative 3D printed prototypes, PCBWay offers unparalleled quality, fast turnaround times, and competitive pricing. And if you use my affiliate link in the description, you'll get $5 off your very first order. And the reason why I ordered my very own PCBs from PCBWay is so I could make my very own breakout boards for an Arduino. So that means I can make connections directly to the board itself instead of making a bunch of wiring from the servos to the board, and that just saves me a whole bunch of time, and it also makes the system a lot more reliable, so there's less chances of having a short. And here are the boards I ended ended up using for this project. Now, if we take a look at the board, we can see that there is a slot for the pins of the Arduino Nano we're going to be using. And there are three pin connectors that are gonna go alongside the board. These are gonna be for the servos. And then we have some extra connectors right here. Those are gonna be for the switch, five volt in, five volt out, and an extra effects pin if we need it. And if we take a look at the back, we have Plentiful Props 3D, and we have a nice little design of the Mark 46 suit because, you know, I'm extra, and I thought that was cool. So yeah, and once we've soldered everything together, we should have something that looks a little bit like this. So we have our Arduino Nano in the center of this. We have connectors that lead to our JR connectors for the servos. And then this right here is an ESP8266 board. It's connected to the switch and a five volt output to power the board. This is going to be a wireless switch that is going to activate the chest. So I'm gonna have another one of these in one of my gloves attached to a button. And once that button is pressed, it's gonna communicate with this one, turning on our chest. So let's set this up in the suit and we'll see how it works. So I just went ahead and installed the electronics in the chest. It wasn't all that difficult. All I had to do was connect all the correct servos to the correct pins on the board. And from there, I connected a wire to the power bank and I connected the ESP8266 module to the switch and the five volt output. Now on the other end, I have this ESP8266 module. It's connected to the power bank as well. And it's already been configured with the correct code. So it's communicating to the other board via its MAC address and it has a super great range. I could be outside right now with this thing and it would still trigger the chest. So without further ado, let me just connect this wire from ground to digital one and there you have it. So right now about half of the servos are detached. That means they're not turned on. I have one turned on with this panel just to keep it in place. Same thing with the other panel. This one only has one turned on too, so it stays in place but these ones right here are completely turned off. Now here's why. So initially when I set this up, I was using MG90 servos for everything. The only issue is these ones would stay attached and they would eventually burn out over time as it stayed open because it applied such a huge strain to the servos. So every time I try opening and closing it, it just got worse and worse. And the power drawn from these two top servos would just be so excessive that literally the battery would tank out and the Arduino would turn off and reset. So I did a little bit of research into some higher torque servos and I discovered these. So these are called, uh, let me just look on the page because I don't remember by heart, K-Power Digital Metal Gear RC Servos. They go by DM08YY. So these are higher torque servos than your MG90S servos. And on top of that, they're slightly smaller too. And these were great for this top panel here because not only are they higher torque, that means they can easily lift this panel up, no problem. But since they're higher torque, that means that this panel can stay in place while the two servos are detached, unlike the MG90S servos, which would just drop it if it were detached. Let me just close this up one more time. <laughs> that is so freaking cool. Okay, let's talk about coding. This whole setup is just using Crashworks 3D's helmet code, and I slightly modified it to do this. All I had to do was to add extra servo pins to everything, so that's six extra servos that I added and associate them with unused pins on the Arduino board. And once that was done, it was just troubleshooting, figuring out the correct servo angles for everything and the speeds I wanted to use, uh, whether or not some servos should detach or attach and when, and then adding some simulated delays. For example, let's see if I can't open this again. You'll see that those two panels open 
and then that panel at the top opens. So that was just using simulated delays. So if you guys would like to see a tutorial on how to modify the Crashworks code to build basically anything, something like this, something else, a missile launcher, whatever it may be, please leave a comment in the comments down below. And honestly, all of this prototyping wouldn't be possible if it weren't for Sunlu. Sunlu was nice enough to send me 15 rolls of their PLA Plus filament to use for this project. And I gotta say, thank you so much. I was able to use quite a bit of it for prototyping and it kind of went to waste, but that is wasted filament that has gone to good use because now I have this. So thank you again to Sunlu for contributing to this project. Now, before I start suiting up, I would just like to show you guys what's going on inside the chest. Alrighty, so currently you're looking at the inside of the chest. There are eight servos running all four panels. Right here I have a power bank which is powering everything and then at the top here I basically took this file off of Colts 3D. It's a 3D printed enclosure and this is where I'm keeping all the electronics. So the only wiring you're seeing exposed right now is wiring for the servos that's going into the enclosure, one wire that's going to the power bank to power it, and then there's another wire right here which is for the arc reactor. And those are going to the two USB ports on the power bank. And this is completely self-contained. There's no wire going down my arm for the button because the button is wireless. So. This right here is a Wemos D1 Mini Pro. It's basically acting as a remote control for my suit. I'm gonna have one of these in each of my gloves with buttons attached to them. Right now it's just a lever switch for uh, easy access. But this right here is communicating with another Wemos board inside of this enclosure, which is attached to the PCB. So it's basically acting as a wireless switch, activating this whole system right here. So there's no wires going into the suit, into the arms or anything. This is completely self-contained. With that said, I'm gonna throw this on and we're gonna see if it works. And the very first order of business is going to be the harness. Let me just... That was noisy, I'm sorry. This is literally an orthopedic back brace that I slightly modified and added some buckles to. Big, big thank you to Bill Daniel Build. Uh, he recommended this when we went to Level Up Expo in Las Vegas. I had my dinky harness that I'm using for the Mark 20. He had this, he was super comfortable having the time of his life. Meanwhile, I was dying in the suit, so he recommended I get one, and I did, and it has changed my life. I still have quite a bit of slack on the buckles. By the time everything's fully adjusted, I'll probably snip those and adjust them as needed. But right now, just rocking these super long straps. Leg number one. Where, which leg do you go on, buddy? Yeah. Eh. There we go. Buckle that in right there. There we go. Leg number two. That is leg numero dos. Awesome. So, again, you have the springs all set up in the quad. So I can lift my knee up and everything slides right out of the way. The midsection, unclip the safety pin, just like that, and wrap it around my torso. Eek, whoop, that is terrifying, okay. Hey, I did it on the first try. Wow, usually that's a lot more difficult. Cool, see how fast that was? I put on the leg, oh, I forgot to put on the shoes. Whoa. And by the way, these are lifted shoes. So there's like a solid inch and a half in the heel. This is my normal height. This is my height with the shoe. It's fantastic, I love it. Okay, uh, now I need to turn on the chest. Come on. Okay, everything works, that's beautiful. So that means I can throw on the back. Just like so. Now that everything is on, I can throw on the chest without breaking anything, hopefully. Oh my. Then clip these side panels in. There we go. Okay, everything is on. Dude, this is awesome. <laughs> and again, uh, the hip panels are on TPU mounts and there's elastics. The quads are on linear rails with springs and everything's hooked up to the knees and the shins. So I can do this. I can lift my knees up just fine. That means I can do one of these. Right now I have all my weight on my knee. Nothing's buckling, nothing's breaking. This is dope. <laughs> so yeah, oh my lord. So that means I can 
do some of these. My main goal with this suit was to be able to do a superhero landing, and that's why I spent so much time prototyping the lower body. But yeah, there you have it, just like that. And now the piece de resistance. I have the button right here. <laughs> Voila, and I can remove the arc reactor, just like that. And then plug it right back in. Then press the button again, that's gonna be in my glove, or in a remote. <laughs> this is so cool! Oopsies, I almost hurt myself there. Boop! Let me press it again. I'm gonna press it a whole bunch of times before the end of this video. Man, if that's not the coolest thing you've seen all day, yeah, I'm having a blast in this. This is amazing, I love this. This is, this is great, look at this. So that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Big thank you once again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and for sponsoring the channel. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope to see you in the next one. I love that so much. <laughs>